Hello everyone and welcome back to my Range Rover, but not the 2003 4.4 HSC you're used to seeing on this channel. That's because it's this, my new to me, 2008 Range Rover Vogue SE TD V8. My old Ranger was, oh, sorry. My old Ranger was, and still is, fantastic. I still think it's Giverny Green paintwork is unbeatable. It was my first Range Rover experience, and despite it being a scabby example, as Matt at High Peak Auto said, it really, well, well and truly sucked me in. And so that's why I've gone and given myself a little upgrade. And to be honest with you, this thing is quite an improvement. As you can tell, I really don't want to leave the car because this interior is absolutely gorgeous. Actually, let's just shed a tear for the cyclists just to my right behind me there. One of them wheels fell off one of their bikes. We're in a Vogue SE here in which there's more things to play with than in a five-year-old's bedroom. The build quality in here is absolutely supreme with plush seats and enough leather to make vegans wince. We have extended leather in the car. We have heated and cooled front and rear seats, rear entertainment amongst a ton of other things. In fact, short of deployable side steps and the leather headlining that you would find on an autobiography, this thing is pretty much maxed out. So believe it or not, this Range Rover was actually a bit of an impulse buy. Despite all my videos lately on whether or not I should upgrade my 2003 4.4 HSE, I wasn't actually convinced. But one night and one last knock from the suspension on my 2003 car last week, I just decided to stop making excuses. And well, 12 hours later, this was on my driveway. It's a 3.6 litre TD V8 car, which sips fuel as opposed to my 4.4 V8 petrol car, which gulps it. I've just returned from a 400 mile round trip to Devon in this car, and we averaged 24 miles per gallon, which doesn't sound like a lot, but that's actually a 40% increase in fuel economy from my last Range Rover. This engine though is so talky and so quiet, you never ever need to put your foot down and the engine seemingly doesn't ever exceed about 10 RPM. And it's a big refinement upgrade in terms of comfort and sound and ride quality from my last one. This one has double glazed windows and the difference in sound when driving along is profound. It is so, so quiet and so, so relaxing to drive. In fact, when I got back late last night after driving four hours straight, I genuinely was not phased at the fact of getting straight back in the car and going out to the shops. I was actually quite looking forward to it. It's really such a pleasure to drive. Now, in all honesty, the 4.4 litre TD V8 would have been my first choice. It's a better engine, comes with a better gearbox. It returns better fuel economy. But with the price that this car was advertised for and what I ended up paying for it, it was a no brainer. I would have needed to spend, let's say another three or at least maybe four grand to upgrade to one of those 4.4 TD V8s. For one of those cars with the mileage like mine under 130,000 in this sort of spec with a dark interior and a Vogue SE, you're well, well over 10,000 pounds. I love the black interior on this car. It doesn't look its age in the slightest. As much as I absolutely adore the cream interior Range Rovers and would have one myself, they just age so, so badly. We've got a reversing camera on this car, which looks like something from Back to the Future. I think, in fact, I'd be more likely to hit a child if I used it than not. I adore the 4x4 display on this as well. It's so retro, but it shows you your ride height. It shows which special off-road program is selected, what the gearbox is doing, uh, amongst a few other things. With this being a 2008 car, it's obviously been facelifted with various differences on the outside, from the grills to the lights, for example. And I like the way it looks. I quite like the wheels that this car is on, although I think I might actually pop the wheels I had on my previous Range Rover onto this one. I think they're a little bit nicer. Let me know what you think. And the eagle-eyed ones amongst you might have noticed the number plate, and believe it or not, it's not private. It's the original plate on this car, and it spells BG08VGE. But if you break it down, I read that as big, 08, the year of this car, Vogue which is a hilariously suited plate to this car. I cannot quite believe it's original. This car's not perfect though, of course, there are a few issues. In fact, I don't even have a working key. I don't have a key which I can unlock and lock using the buttons. It has to be done manually. And also 
the main key I spent super gluing the first day I picked the car up as it literally came apart in my hands. The parcel shelf is snapped. The driver's heated seat, typical, doesn't work, although I guess that makes sense as it's the one that's probably had the most use. And the transmission feels a little bit lumpy, especially when cold and occasionally when cold, likes to trigger itself into a fail-safe mode, something I thought I'd be getting away from by buying a newer Range Rover, but it needs a little bit of attention. I miss the sound of my petrol V8 Range Rover, and I also miss the simplicity of its naturally aspirated power delivery. But this is the Range Rover that I always wanted. It's so soft, so quiet, so luxurious, and just beautiful. Sometimes I feel like you've just got to follow those impulses you have in life. I haven't stopped smiling since I picked this thing up. It feels completely familiar, however just delivers an entirely different experience. It's Sunday today and so once I've finished filming this video I'm going off to visit some family with my girlfriend and it's quite a long trip, you know, there and back in a day. It's many, many hours on the road but I genuinely can't wait. I'm excited to do it. So let me know what you think about my purchase then. Do you approve? Do you not approve? Why not? Should I have waited to get a 4.4 TD V8? I mean, in all honesty, I can always upgrade and I do not regret buying this at all. The difference is marked compared to my last car and right now I'm just really enjoying experiencing that. So do let me know what you think guys nonetheless. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you're not subscribed already, do please subscribe. There's gonna be obviously more content coming on this Range Rover, amongst some other cars that are gonna be coming to the collection in the near future. So thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all very, very soon.